Hello everyone. Thank you all so much for being here and for joining our live stream. My name is Tressa Buckland. I am a community experience associate here at Curable. And today I am so lucky to be joined by a Curable All-Star and groups graduate, Michael DiBernardo. Michael is so inspiring, you guys. He first began experiencing his chronic symptoms back in 2015, and these symptoms ultimately led him to find Curable. In just a few moments, Michael will be joining the live, and he's gonna give us the inside scoop on his entire healing journey. For those of you who are just now joining, don't, don't worry, you haven't missed too much, um, and there's plenty to look forward to for the rest of this, these 15 minutes that we're live today. Um, this video will be saved as well to our IGTV, so if you miss anything, you can always go back and rewatch it there. Okay, I think that's all the housekeeping that I had to get through, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring Michael on the chat. There. And Michael should be hopping on any minute now. We'll just hang tight and wait for him to join. There it is. Michael, how are you? Hey there. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, can you hear me? I can. All righty. Well, thank you, first off, for being here. I'm so thrilled that you agreed to share your story with the Curable Universe and beyond. Thanks. So I already gave everyone a brief intro on you. So if you don't mind, let's just kick things off. And could you take us back to when your symptoms first started and tell us a little bit about what was going on for you then? Yeah, um, I'd been through a pretty stressful couple of years. I was in kind of crisis mode for that long and I just had some time to settle. And it's kind of a silly story, but I was at the office and I literally put some hot sauce on my lunch that was called pain and I ate it. It was delicious. Wait, a hot my stomach, Yeah, my <laughs> stomach twisted and okay. I'd never really had stomach pain before. And uh, in the weeks ahead, it just got um, increasingly intense and I started to experience a bunch of things. Um, things that some of them I'd, I'd experienced before, others were brand new. And that's more or less how it started. Um, I mean, kind of spiraling to be frank, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what was going on for you? Because obviously, although it's pretty clever and cheeky that the hot sauce's name just so happened to <laughs> pain, there must have been something else going on. Like, what was work like? What was relationships like? Do you think anything could have contributed to the- Yeah, and um, like, I'm careful to talk about this stuff because it can, it can bring it up again, but uh, all of the above, basically. Okay. So the way I bottom line it is that um, I've been through a lot of personal stress and I wasn't really acknowledging how stressful my job was. Mm. Um, and there were like four or five major problems in my life that I was uh, just tolerating. I was kind of like, if I try to move any one of these, I don't have the strength to deal with it. So it was sort of day by day, just distracting myself a lot from my problems. And um, yeah, that, there was a lot going on at that time. <laughs> and what was interesting to me though, is that when, when the symptoms cropped up, it was, I was starting to feel like I had a handle on it. It wasn't like I was completely in crisis mode. It's like, okay, I have some time to now start to address this. And all of a sudden, boom. Um, and I think that was the most demotivating part of it is I felt like I was finally getting to a place where I could start to take control of my life and then my body freaked out. Mm. Which I now understand is completely natural, but at the time it was really scary. So Yeah. At the time it's so hard to understand that when it's happening to you in the moment. Right. So what happened next? You experienced this awful pain and then what? It's a bit <laughs> disappointing, honestly. Like I think I'd been through something like this before. Um not the same, but enough that I guess I should have known better, but um, I did treat it really physically. I, you know, started seeing um, gastroenterologists. I saw specialists. I was trying all kinds of supplements, all this kind of stuff. So um, that went very poorly, <laughs> but that is what I tried for quite a while um, on the order of months. 
Um, and you're totally, you're not alone in that. It's not, yeah, yeah. not stupid. I feel like so many healing stories, you know, it starts with people being like, well, I saw every specialist under the sun and they all told me, go find something else, you know? So you're yeah, not- Yeah, I think the thing I found most frustrating about that was that like the next step would always be gated behind something that was worse for me. Like um, mm. there would be tests that I, I knew I didn't need, but they're like, well, we won't really continue to help you unless you do this thing. And the thing was often like, why don't you fast for a few days so we can do this exam? And I'd already lost 40 pounds. I was having a hard time like standing to mm. do another test that required fasting was not good for me but i kept doing it until i couldn't do it anymore basically oh my goodness that must have been so difficult i'm so sorry you had to go through that um what ultimately led you to think outside of the realm of normalized western medical tests and kind of look towards the newer science the brain body science like curable yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I, um, it's hard to remember, but I think um, the, the gist of how I got there was I don't, I'm not particularly active on Instagram. I don't, I don't ever use it other than now. And, um, but I was catching up on what a couple friends were doing and I got an ad for a curable and I saw it and I was kind of at the point where I knew I'd run out of physical options and I knew for myself that it was stress related. Like I knew it. I just didn't want to admit it because what that meant is there was nobody who was going to tell me how to fix it. I had to go figure it out on my own. Mm. Um, and so I clicked through and uh, went through the intro to curable and mm-hmm. just even in the early like exercises that you do where it's like warming you up to what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, everything that was being stated there like resonated with me it's like yeah this makes this feels like what i'm going through it instinctually feels right and then the next thing is that um i like to have models for things i like to understand like why something's happening and that's what was so frustrating about some of this stuff and um as i started digging a bit more into curable not very far i think it's dave clark he has a book called um they can't find anything wrong Mm -hmm. and so i sort of i read that alongside um working on on the curable exercises and it really helped me understand like wow okay this this can show up a lot of different ways and um after that it was more like i wasn't sure if it was going to work but i believed that it was right you know what i mean and that's that's kind of where i started yeah that just belief and taking that leap of faith can sometimes be so powerful wow um so you were reading Dave Clark's book and you were doing your curable work. What was your healing trajectory like? Like, what did it look like? Did you encounter any bumps along the road or was it smooth sailing? I mean, it's not over. <laughs> I think um, what, what's, what's interesting is that um, I, in my mind, committed to... Uh, basically, the way I put it to myself is like, as long as I feel good again like on the day that i die like it can happen then as long as i i have that victory like i get to the point where i can wake up one morning and say you know i woke up today feeling really great and that's the last day of my life i was happy with that that's kind of where i i got to because putting timelines on things i realized had been hurting me a lot Mm -hmm. um and what was interesting is that my pain related symptoms were gone in like a month it happened really quickly wow um it was violent like a lot of my early writing exercises and just some of the processing was um like stuff came out i really didn't expect it was really un unexpected where some of the um feelings were coming from and just like some of the realization because mm-hmm. they weren't directly related to what was happening in my life you know um and then after that you know i had a few weeks of feeling on top of the world and then everything changed like um the symptoms weren't pain related. They were different. There were a lot of tension, um, just panic and just like really visceral things that were very disturbing to deal with. I dealt with them at like a, a three or a four before, and now they were like 11 and a half. Mm. Um, and I later learned not too much later, actually, that this is also completely natural, like recovering from one symptom, especially a pain related one can expose other stuff. Mm-hmm. And that one was a much longer road. Um, like on the, it was a long road, let's say. So it was very up and down. 
And yeah. Uh, yeah, there was a lot there. But you are progressing down this road. And yeah, I mean, it's very been going great. Awesome. Awesome. You mentioned earlier that placing a timeline on your healing was not conducive to healing for you. Was there anything else that you were doing pre-curable that you found was like, now, hindsight, 2020, looking back that you're like, oh my gosh, why did I waste my time doing that? Yeah, I mean, there's so much I could write a book, but I think the, the biggest one that comes to mind is that I didn't, it, working with curable and, and the stuff that I found through it, helped me realize like how much I was weaponizing good behaviors against myself, like mm. exercise or eating well, or, um, you know, working on my career, just the things that I was telling myself in my head, they're good for me. And then I would just try to do them perfectly. Um, or I would consider myself a bad person if I didn't do them at like extreme intensity and stuff like that. Mm. What I've learned now really helps me is that when I experience flare ups, especially longer term one, what helps me is to do the things, not because they make me feel better, but because um, if I'm eating healthy, if I'm um, just doing these good behaviors that I've learned through here one and through my own, especially moving around, even if I'm doing them, especially if I'm doing them at like 10%, what usually happens is that by removing all the distractions that I'm using to distract myself with my problems and doing these healthy things, it's usually in the process of doing these healthy things that I realize what's going on and I clear up the problem. So the the healthy habits aren't there to fix the problem. They're there to create an atmosphere where I can solve the problem for myself. Um, and the frequency with which that's happened is astonishing. Like, <laughs> like literally dozens of times where, you know, I start to feel things escalating. I'm not feeling great. I'm avoiding it, avoiding it. And I just stick to the things that I know are healthy, try to get some rest. And, you know, I'm on a jog and suddenly, oh, something's happening. And it's not like a thought, like it's a feeling, something's happening. Right. Man, I hate to sound like a walking cliche, but it's all about the journey, not the destination, right? <laughs> yeah. So we only have a few more minutes here, but this is one of my favorite questions to hear from people who have had such astounding recovery stories and are going through the healing process. Um, if you could give any piece of advice to yourself a few years back when you first experienced the symptoms, what would that be? Yeah, it, it would be, I guess the same thing, but said two different ways is like, um, stop minimizing your problems. Like that was a behavior I had where I had all these things that I was like, no, I'm fine. I can take care of this. And, um, it took me a while to realize that I was doing that because I actually at some level believed I was superior to other people. Like other people will have problems with these things, but I don't, I can do it. Um, so I would definitely say like, take a second look at that. <laughs> and then um, the things that you keep shoving aside because they shouldn't be a problem for you face those problems. Because as soon as I started doing that, um, things got way easier, way faster than I expected. Like some of these things that I thought had built up to the point where I felt like they were going to be impossible to tackle even one at a time. Once mm -hmm. I just stopped and faced them, they, they were very solvable. It's just, I was scared to do it. So, um, yeah, that would be it is acknowledge that you have problems. Stop using this vision you have of yourself of being invincible and better than other people to hurt yourself and um, just face the things that you're having problems with because they are problems. Very, very wise, inspiring closing words. Michael, I think that's about all the time we have together today. So I just wanted to go ahead and thank you one last time for opening up and being super honest and raw and real with us all today on Instagram, You're one of your least favorite platforms, but the platform we find ourselves on today for you. Um, do you have any closing thoughts before we go? I just wanted to say thanks. Like, um, Curable honestly saved my life. And um, I'm feeling great these days, and I never would have got here if I didn't click on that ad, you know, all these, all these months ago. And uh, yeah, just thank you. And thanks to everybody for listening. I hope you do well with yourself. Well, we are so glad you clicked on that ad. And yeah, to everyone watching, thank you all so much for being here to support Michael in this recovery story share. Michael, it's been a pleasure.